Welcome to Tennessee's at Home Learning Series for Math. Today's lesson is for all third grade out there, though all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is number 17 in a series. My name is Lisa Sharkley and I'm a third grade teacher at Venus Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see the previous lesson, you can find it on Tennessee Department of Education's website at www.tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune in, but it might be better if you would refer back to the previous lessons because I'll talk about those. Today, we'll be learning about breaking apart arrays to find products. For you to fully participate, you need paper, pencil, and a hard surface to write on. Are you ready to get started? Okay, let's begin. I'm going to start by going over some vocabulary words that you'll need for this lesson. Lesson 17, Multiplication Facts and Strategy. We have some key words. Factor, and please say the words with me, okay? Let's do it again. Factor, product, distributive property, Array and Petition. Those are our key words. And again, today, we'll be learning about breaking apart arrays to find their products. For our warm-up, let's use a strategy to solve the multiplication equation 6 times 8. We've learned that we can use known facts to find unknown facts. Let's use a strategy you practiced before called using a five fact and addition a five fact and addition all right as you can see my array is already broke up you can see this is a whole array but i have sliced it right here so i can use my five facts plus addition one two three four five times one two three four five six seven eight that's what this one shows, my top piece. 5 times 8 equals, I can count the 5's, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 5 times 8 equals 40. Then I have my one more row at the bottom. One row times how many's in the row? 8. 1 times 8 equals 8. So now, 6 times 8, 6 times 8 is equal to 40, that was this piece from here to here, plus the piece at the very bottom, 8, which would be, yes, 48. 6 times 8 equals 40 plus 8, which equals 48. We use the strategy of a five fact and an addition to find the answer. All right, we're off to a good start. Let's revisit the multiplication expression of six times eight. We're going to practice using the distributive property to find the product. In this strategy, we begin with the whole array and break it into smaller arrays of our choosing. So we have that same 6 times 8, but we're going to break it into smaller arrays, and then we put it all back together again. All right. I think I want to make a horizontal line. I'm going to cut right here. Right in the middle, because I have some up here, some here. I have an equal amount on both sides. Let's find the multiplication equation that matches where I put our line. One, two, three. Three rows. Three times how many's in each row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three times eight. All right. Let's go down to the bottom. Again, the same thing. One, two, three. Three times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. All right. I could count all my circles, or I could skip count by three, and I'm pretty good at that. Let's try it. Three, six, nine, twelve, 
15, 18, 21, 24. I hope you skip counted with me. Well, I know if 3 times 8 is 24 at the top, 3 times 8 at the bottom is 24. So to find 6 times 8, 6 times 8 would be equal to 24 plus 24. And when I add those up, I always add them up this way. 24 plus 24, 4 plus 4, 8, 2 plus 2, 4 equals 48. Another strategy. So we have the five, five plus an addition, and now we have the distributive property. Two different strategies. Hmm. Let's keep going. Let's continue practicing using the distributive strategy. To find the product for seven times eight, let's first draw the array. Well, you see I have it drawn. On your paper, use dots to draw seven rows of eight. So on your paper, please draw your seven rows of eight. Go ahead and draw it pretty quick so we can kind of work this one together. We can work it together. Seven rows of eight. Seven rows go down. Eight will be in each row. It'll look a lot like mine, okay? All right, I think you about have it drawn. Okay. We're working with the distributive property. So let's see. I think I want to make a vertical line first on this one. I'm going to make my vertical line. I'm going to use a five fact. So let's say one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put it right here. Okay. Let's see what's on this side and then this side. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times one, two, three, four, five. Okay, seven times five. This side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times one, two, three, three. All right, now I have it. I've broken apart my array to two smaller chunks. Let's find the product for them. Seven times five, I can count by five seven times, which would be 35, good. Seven times three, seven times three equals, I could skip count by three seven times, or I could skip count by seven three times. Seven, 14, 21. All right, I have my products for both of my smaller chunks. To find 7 times 8, I need to put it all back together again. So I would add those two. 5 plus 1, 6. 3 plus 2, 5. 7 times 8 equals 56. Oh, do you know the other trick? 5, 6, 7, 8. That's what I always tell my own kids. Five, six, seven, eight when it comes to 56. I'll do the first practice problem. The array has been broken into smaller arrays. Write the multiplication equation that describes the smaller arrays Use the smaller arrays to find the product of 7 times 6. Again, we're using the distributive property. We're trying to find what is 7 times 6. We're breaking it apart into two smaller arrays, and then we'll add our products back together. All right, let's check this one out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times, let's see how many are going across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I like when we do the fives. Fives are easy for us. All right, and our last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. How many's in each one? One. All right, let's see. 
So I'm putting that 7 times 6 is equal to, I'm going to use my parentheses, 7 times 5 plus 7 times 1. Well, 7 times 5 equals mm -hmm, 35 plus 7 times 1 equals 7. 35 plus 7 equals, I hear you, 42. 7 times 6 equals 42. We use the distributive property to chunk it, and then we put it back together again. And we're doing some good work this morning with me. Now let's do this problem together. The arrays, 4 times 6, has been broken into two smaller arrays. Write the multiplication equation that describes the smaller arrays. Use the smaller arrays to find the product of 4 times 6. All right, here we go again. It's already been cut for me right in the middle. Let's see what's above. 1, 2, 2 rows. That's my first factor, 2. How means in each row would be my second factor? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 times 6. I can count by 2 6 times. Say it with me. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 12. My bottom array. 1, 2, 2 rows. And there's also 6 in each row which would also be 12. For me to find what 4 times 6 is, I would add the product to my two smaller arrays equal 12 plus 12. Notice where my 12's are coming from. They're coming from my two smaller ones. And 12 plus 12 equals, uh-huh, 24. Good job on that one. Now, you try one by yourself. Look back at your notes if you need to. The array 4 times 7 has been broken into two smaller arrays. Write the multiplication equation that describes the smaller arrays. Use the smaller arrays to find the product of 4 times 7. Okay, I'll give you a minute to work on this one. One minute, draw it, work on it, put it back together. All right, let's see if our answer is matched up. For my first part, I know there's four rows times, there's four in each row. Four times four equals 16. For my second smaller array, again, there's four rows. But in this one, there's three in each row. Four times three equals 12. So now I have four times 7 equals 16 plus 12. When I add my 16 plus 12 together, I come up with, or what did you come up with? And I bet you're saying 28. 4 times 7 is equal to 16 plus 12, which equals 28. Lasso cheer, yay! I hope you notice that it doesn't matter if we broke apart the array 
with a vertical line or a horizontal line. We still were able to find the product of the whole array by adding together the products from the smaller arrays. The total number of counters stay the same. What changes is the way we distribute the counters. This is what it means to use the distributive property. That is, the product of the whole array is equal to the sum of the products from the two smaller arrays. Thanks for reading with me. Our last one, our last one together. A marching band has four rows of flutes with ten flutes in each row. How many flutes are in the marching band? Use the distributive property to solve. Okay, and I know some of you were saying, then Miss Sherkley, I know my tens. That's okay. Try to use that distributive property to break apart and then put it back together again. Okay, one minute. Alright, let's look at it together. Four rows of ten. Alright, four rows. One, two, three, four. I have my four rows in each row. There will be ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll do the same for these. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm using that distributive property and breaking it apart. I think I want to draw a horizontal line right here. That would show one, two rows with ten in each row. Two times ten equals, oh, Easy. I could count by 10, 2 times 10, 20. And my bottom piece or array is a mirror of the top one. So it's also 2 times 10, which would be 20. So now 4 times 10 equals 20 plus 20, which would equal 40 my product would be 40. If you had 40, let's say, let's do a silent cheer. Yay! Great work, students, today. We reviewed using the distributive property to find products. That is, we broke apart an array into smaller arrays and then added their products to find the product of the whole array. I hope you're feeling confident that you can use known facts to find unknown facts. You sure did a great job. I will show you the independent practice that goes along with this lesson. Thank you for welcoming me, in, welcome me into your home, and I'll see you in our next lesson. Bye-bye.